What is up everyone, NYKA31. Got some things to discuss. Madden 18, a couple of nuggets were dropped over the past uh, 24 to 48 hours. Most notably, uh, the return of team play in the form of uh, Mutt Squads. And also, Clint Oldenburg um, tweeted a image from the game where he showed the pass protection adjustments that you can make in the game. Slide protect left, right, pinch, maximum protect. And also, in the bottom left corner of that uh, pass protection adjustment box, you had a little nugget called ID the mic. We'll get into that in a little bit. It caused um, a slew of both positive reactions, mostly positive, positive reactions, which was really good to see. I was encouraged to see that there's a nice chunk of the Madden community that um, recognizes the implications of that. Yet also, there was a large amount of people responding to that tweet that had no idea what in the world that meant. So I'm going to um, use this video as a bit of a educational tool to explain what that means a little bit later. First, I want to talk about Mutt team play, Mutt squads. Honestly, I'm guilty of severely underestimating how popular team play is. I always looked at it as a small fringe uh, niche, really. I kind of stick to my own little bubble of the modes that I like to play and never really paid it much mind. I tried it once the last time I was in the game. I didn't really like it too much. I found myself uh, fighting the urge to abandon my teammates and go rogue. <laughs> I'm someone who wants to play with my team on my own. I want to control what my team does, how my team plays, and the decisions that I make, and be done with it. So it's just not my cup of tea. Will I try it? I'll give it a shot. But only with people who I know and who I've played Madden with for a few years now. I'll be damned if I'm going to go into that mode playing with randoms. No, sir. That ain't going to happen. But even so, I don't really see that being a large uh, chunk of my Madden playing time. I want to stick to online CFM and salary cap when I play um, an online ranked mode. But for the guys who like that and who have been lobbying for team play to come back, great, I'm happy for you. Enjoy it. Have fun. I understand that the CFM guys get a little bit antsy at the attention that Mutt receives, and I get that. It's understandable. Mutt is going to get a lot of attention. It's a serious money maker and the uh, competitive Madden scene is just going to get bigger. It's not going to go away. But I don't think you guys are going to get left out in the cold either. I mean, we're just beginning the new cycle for the new Madden game. We know how that pattern works. It's still, it's just June 2nd. The game doesn't come out for another two and a half months. So I expect the CFM guys to... Um, get their time in the sun during this Madden news, news cycle period. My one concern with this mode is simply a matter of resource allocation. I think the more uh, masters you try to serve, the more inevitably you get stretched thin somewhere. I mean, we, we see this with 2K Basketball. 2K Basketball serves so many different factions that inevitably issues tend to bleed from one area to another and you end up with a game like 2K17 that was patched a dozen times, which is just an obscene, obscene amount of patches for a game. We go crazy here in the Madden community when, I, when a game gets patched two times with a handful of tuner updates. Can you imagine if Madden was um, patched a dozen times this year? People would have gone insane. They would have lost their minds. So yeah, I don't see this going off without a hitch and completely smooth. I mean, when do they ever do? The obligatory release day patch has almost become, you know, standard fare and par for the course. We're pretty much numb to it at this point. We expect it. And I'm just really curious to see how well they execute compartmentalizing, patching, and tuning all of these different modes and settings that are going to be in the game this year. It bears watching. Now, let's get on to Clint Oldenburg's tweet. ID the mic. Get good. Hashtag get good. I am co-opting that from Clint Oldenburg. I am culturally appropriating that phrase and making it my own. And he's just going to have to deal with it and accept it. Bottom line. 
But <laughs> anyhow, what does ID the mic mean? What that basically is in the real world is a um, protection call. Offensive lines, they go through a week preparing for a game, uh, game planning how they're going to block certain fronts, who they're going to dedicate resources to um, double team and give help to, and all that good stuff. When you get to a game and you see how the defense aligns, it's usually the quarterback's responsibility to make protection calls at the line of scrimmage based off of what he sees and um, what pressure he anticipates coming. A defense tries to disguise their intentions with a variety of uh, looks pre-snap in the hopes of fouling up the offensive line's checks and post-snap fouling up um, their assignments. It's not always literally IDing the Mike Backer, although it can be. What he's doing is he's pointing out who the offensive line is going to treat as the Mike Backer for pass protection purposes. If they anticipate that player rushing, who they ID as the Mike, the line will center their assignments around him and adjust off of that player's alignment. So theoretically, it allows you to pick up pressure regardless of where it's coming from. But the key is ID IDing the right guy as that mic. If you ID a guy lined up in the, let's say the weak side B gap, for example, as the mic, and he doesn't come, but instead it's a strong side B gap backer who's coming, you're going to be in a world of hurt. That's when you see your favorite team allow a sack on a four-man rush to an untouched rusher or a fire zone blitz to an untouched rusher, even though technically you have five blocking five. You ID the wrong guy pre-snap, and then post-snap, if that guy doesn't come, the offensive line is left having to scramble on the fly to pick up whatever line stunt or pressure is coming, and if they can't do it, boom, your quarterback is lying on his back. That is what happens. So for you guys who um, don't know what ID the mic means, that's the basic concept of it. And for the guys that knew what that meant, it's a legit reason to be very pleased. I've been advocating for better slide protection mechanics and more um, in-depth protection mechanics in general for quite some time, as have other people. And assuming it's designed the way I think it's going to be designed, or anticipate it being designed, and assuming it works, of course, that gives us an awful lot of control over our pass protection. I'm someone who likes that responsibility as a user for making proper adjustments and IDing things correctly. I'll never complain about being sacked on a blitz if I'm caught either unprepared for it or if I make a check at the line and I'm wrong. If I type protect right and the blitz comes left and I get sacked, how can I get mad at that? Just give me good mechanics that work, that do what they're designed to do, and I will live with the outcome. If I'm making wrong decisions, I'll focus on making better decisions. But just give me the tools I need to execute what I'm trying to accomplish. If I'm playing protect the sticks on fourth and five, I expect my defenders to be there. I expect them to be driving on anything underneath that first down marker. And if they get beat over the top of it by a well-designed route combination, that happens. That's sports. <laughs> you can't ask one defender to be in two places at one time. It's impossible unless he's a user-controlled middle linebacker. But <laughs> that's... I digress. We've been down that street before. So anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Love to hear yours. Talk to you all later. Peace.